Hi, Terry Shanifeld here from UAB School of Medicine. Prognostic information can be gleaned from a variety of study designs. We'll go over those study designs in this video. In this lecture, I want to give a very 30,000 foot view um, of study designs. I'm not going to go in depth in any individual study design. We'll do that later in uh, the harm module and the therapy modules. Uh, but I want to give just a broad overview of various study designs for which we can get prognostic information. So this figure shows the hierarchy of study designs. So studies can be either descriptive or analytic. Descriptive studies, the PNEO stands for patients and outcomes. And what that means is really descriptive studies are not able to look at relationships between potential causative factors and outcomes. They can only describe if those factors are present, but we're not really able to study any relationships. And descriptive studies are things like surveys and qualitative studies. Analytic studies, on the other hand, attempt to look at causative relationships and try to study them. The PICO stands for Patient, Intervention, Comparator, and Outcome. The PECO stands for Patient, Exposure, Comparator, and Outcome. And analytic studies can be further broken down into experimental and observational studies. Experimental studies, researchers do an experiment. They give some factor and look to see its effect on the outcome. And this is the randomized controlled trials. Observational studies as researchers, we don't do anything to our patients. We just watch to see what happens to them and try to describe which risk factors are present, what outcomes are present, and try to see if there's a relationship between them. Observational studies, the classic ones are cohort studies and case control studies. There's also cross-sectional uh, studies. So we can get prognostic information from a variety of study designs. We can get them from cohort studies, randomized controlled trials, and case control studies. Now these are listed here in the order of preference. It's preferable to use a cohort study for prognostic information followed by a randomized control trial followed by a case control study. Let's look at what each one of these means. So a cohort study, like I mentioned, is the best design for answering prognostic questions. Cohort studies, as you'll remember from that flow chart earlier, are observational studies. We just observe patients as researchers. And there's an exposed group or cohort and an unexposed group or cohort. And we follow them forward in time for the development of disease or not. What I mean by exposed and unexposed is to some potential factor that causes or doesn't cause disease. To look at this prognostically, instead of following people with some risk factor, now I'm going to follow patients with a prognostic factor. So in this case, my prognostic factors I'm interested in are stages of cancer. So I have a group of patients who have stage 1 cancer, a group who have stage 2 cancer. I follow them for five years to see how many are dead or alive. And so I'm trying to understand the relationship between cancer stage, which is my prognostic factor, and the outcome, which is five-year survival. Randomized controlled trials look very similar to cohort studies. We have an exposed group, which is an intervention group, and an unexposed group, which is our control group. But in this case, instead of patients self-selecting to be in one of these two groups, as a researcher, we determine which group they go into by randomization. Essentially, a coin flip determines whether they're in one arm or the other. And the importance of randomization is it equalizes all the other things that could impact outcome, like age, comorbidities, demographic factors. Everything you can think of will be equalized other than the in one group gets the intervention, the other group doesn't. And, but we do things the same way. We just follow them over time for, the, for outcomes. So randomized control trials can give us prognostic information about the group in the intervention arm, and we can get prognostic information about the group in the control arm. Now the problem with prognostic information from randomized control trials is it's limited. And it's limited by the most powerful thing when we think about study design, which is randomization. And the problem is now randomization has equalized the prognostic factors between the two groups. So if I was doing a cancer randomized control trial, I'd have just as many people with, say, stage 1 cancer in the intervention arm as in the control arm. Stage 2 would be equalized, etc. So I'm limited in the number of prognostic factors I can look at. Essentially, I can really only look at one prognostic factor, um, and that's the intervention itself in randomized control trials. But we can get some prognostic information for our patients. Finally, case control studies. Or, or another observational study. Again, we don't do anything as researchers. We just observe people and look for relationships. But in a case control study, we start with cases or patients with disease, and we start with controls or patients without disease, and we go backwards in time to look for exposures to risk factors or not. If we think about this prognostically, we could take people who, let's say, 
had some outcome, let's say cancer recurrence would be our cases, lack of recurrence would be our controls. We go backward and look at a variety of prognostic factors that we're interested in and see which ones of them are associated with recurrence or not. So I know this is a very brief overview. It was meant to be that way. Um, again, we'll go in much greater depth of individual study designs, the pros and cons, how to actually design them, um, the errors that can be made in them um, in later modules in the course. What I wanted to do here is just give a very broad overview so you can understand when I we talk about um, a prognostic study and the design that was used that it will make at least a little bit of sense to you. This helped you understand more about different study designs that can be used to gain prognostic information. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the contact me section of my blog. Have a great day.